Well, hello everyone. I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing today? Interesting show I got planned here. I've been wanting to do this for some time and it works out perfectly that yesterday I recapped the acclimation period where there's no pads, no hitting, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Sealers are off on the day I'm recording this and I'll be back up for the next six days where they are hitting it hard. So I kind of had a, a gap there in terms of true Steeler stuff in which to talk about. So I often re reference some of these analytic guides I use, and this is straight from Warren Sharp's book, which I urge you to check out, that in every team section, they have what Vegas is forecasting their over under win total, a reason to bet the under and a reason to bet the over. And I want to go through those with the AFC North teams, who, by the way, all have ridiculously difficult schedules. The Steelers have the hardest schedule in the league, if you don't know that by now. The Ravens and Browns aren't far behind, although the Ravens have some rest things that really are going to their advantage, which is smidge on the unfair section, by, but we'll get to that here. And the Bengals are a little lighter. I mean, their schedule's not insanely bad, but some of the rest stuff for them is really, really difficult. So let's dig right in. We'll do the Steelers last. Um, Baltimore Ravens are in Vegas forecast to win 11 and a half games. One of the biggest numbers in the league. So here's why you bet the under the offensive line is in primary area of concern for the Ravens. Baltimore finished ninth in ESPN pass block win rate and fifth in run, uh, run block win rate. However, three of those starters are gone and left ha left tackle, uh, Ronnie Stanley's back, but, Folks, he's really, really hard to, to bet on. They're probably going to need Rose, Roger Rosengard in the second round to win the job at right tackle, and there's guard issues. I mean, besides Tyler Linderbaum, their offensive line to me is extremely concerning. So that's one reason to bet the under. There are also massive changes to staff on the defensive side of the ball. Mike McDonald, as you know, is Seattle's head coach, but the next two guys up in line – Denard we Wilson and Anthony Weaver were position coaches for the Ravens last year, and they became coordinators for the Titans and Dolphins, respectively. So that's a lot of coaching firepower to lose as well. They also, their last bullet point here, also have questions at receiver. Zay Flowers is really strong, but they're really counting on Bateman to be an every down type number two. And one note, note too, is including quarterback, but not including tight end. So quarterback, running back, wide receiver, their depth is really concerning to me. They have great tight end depth. I mean, they have two studs, but, but behind Lamar is not pretty as we speak. And their receiver depth and running back depth is really worrisome. So that's the reasons about the under. Why would you bet the over? Well, Lamar's coming off an MVP season. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, enough said. And he, I hadn't heard this, but his winning percentage in the regular season is almost identical to Tom Brady's. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they, Lamar wins games. The other reason about the over, Derrick Henry is not the same running back he was early in his career. His explosive run rate is down, but he's still a dominant player and a really nice addition and defending, frankly, two of the top ball carriers of the last 10 years in Jackson and Henry, and they couldn't have been more different, of course, but that's going to prove really, really difficult, especially in that scheme. That being said, I think this is an easy under for me, and I have great respect for the Ravens, but getting to 12 wins is tough. With that schedule, it makes it even harder, and those O-line things and offensive depth situation, as well as defensive coaching staff being, being depleted, worries me quite a bit. Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season, for Major League Baseball, golf, and many more. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, next up here, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. 
Their over-under win total sits at 10.5. Much more palatable. Why bet the under? Well, the Bengals will be out without two key starters on defense, DJ Reader, Shadobi Awuzie. And frankly, their splits against the run with and without Reader of late are remarkable. And really bad when he's off. And they were really bad in that way last year. And Awuzie has been a solid number two or you know, solid, number two type corner for them. So that's a big loss. I mentioned the schedules. They play three short week road games, including a week 15 matchup against the Titans. That game is part of a run of three games in 10 days. That type of run is never great, but is more daunting late in the season. Like not only you want to don't want to have a run like that, but you don't want to have it late. So that is certainly a reason for concern for the Bengals. Why bet the over? Well, Joe Burrow returns to health. I mean, the, his durability would be one of my things on the under. You know, I mean, that's been a concern, but it looks like all systems are go and Burrow should, should have a real training camp for maybe about the first time in his career. The Bengals also faced the toughest schedule in the league last year, and it does look like their opponents that they play are not going to be the toughest. At least it's easier. And Again, I mean, they were almost a playoff team without Burrow playing the, the toughest schedule in the league last year. So think about that. Last bullet point about the over, Zach Taylor did a tremendous job, especially after the Burrow went down for the season. The Bengals managed to stay in the playoff race and finish with a winning record. Taylor devised a creative game plan that helped keep the offense moving with Jake Browning, at quarterback. His coaching will be an asset. I agree with that as well. Yeah, I mean, so... I'm pretty bullish on the Bengals. I, I think Burrow, Chase, et cetera, are going to be MVP type guys this year. I mean, Burrow in particular, but I can see this being Chase's best year of his career. They fixed some things at safety. I think they are a pretty well-coached team. I wasn't super high on Taylor early in his career, but I've warmed up to him quite a bit. I did like what he did with Browning. So to get to 11 wins, I think I'm in – on the Bengals as a yes there. All right. How about the Cleve Brownies? Uh, my former employer. Their forecast win total is eight and a half. Reasons to bet the under. The Browns averaged the fourth most plays using 11 personnel with 48 per game last season. But their passing offense on these plays was very inefficient. So... Even though the team performs much better with 12 personnel, two tight ends on the field, it really seems like they're trying to cater to Watson with three receivers and not two tight ends. Like, I'm not sure they know the best way to do things, and they seem to be, as a whole, getting away from Chubb and going to Watson, which I understand the investment, but one's much better than the other. And, oh, by the way, Chubb's also banged up. But... um. The Browns are set to allocate the most cap space to quarterbacks in a single season in NFL history, uh, elite production of which we have not seen from Watson since his time in Houston. So the cap hit thing obviously doesn't matter on over-under, but they've dumped with Watson and Winston now and Huntley an unbelievable amount of cap space into the quarterback position, and it might be the weakest position on the team. The Browns were able to win, pull off wins in close games last season, going 5-0 and in games decided by a field goal or less, and 6-2 and in one possession games. Those things, and we'll get the Steelers with this too, and I've talked to that, about the, that with no end, almost always creep back to the, to the, the margins, you know, to creep, creep back closer to 500. But how about <clears throat> why to bet the over? <clears throat> Cleveland's defense was far and away the main catalyst for their success in 2023. They ranked first in non-sack EPA allowed this year, best of any team since 2019. If they were able to do this in a season which they ranked 27th in health, the ceiling is very high. So they were banged up a lot on defense last year and still were one of the best defenses in the league, if not number one. Um. On top of losing Nick Chubb for, to an injury that could leave them unavailable to start the season, the Browns' offensive line last year was the fifth most injured unit. The team also struggled to lock in a starting quarterback due to re repeated injuries to Sean Watson. They were still a playoff squad despite those issues, and they are likely to have a better injury luck this season. You never know, but 
I tend to agree that injury luck is bound to come back to the mean. This team dealt with a lot of injuries last year, probably won't get hit as hard. They also say this is one of the best top to bottom rosters in the NFL. I I do agree with that. I think this is a well-built team. <sighs> Win total at eight and a half, though. I'm going to go over, but I for that bet, I wish Chubb was Chubb to start the season, and I wish they were going to dedicate themselves more to him and the run game like they've had such success over the years doing. I do very much believe in the defense, the scheme, the personnel, the depth of this team. But the quarterback's the big thing that holds me back. That being said, I think they get over. Okay, and lastly, your Pittsburgh Steelers. Can they get over eight and a half wins as well? Again, awful schedule. Before those eight games, you'd really hope to see five wins at least in the bank to at least get the nine. Here's why you bet the under, though. Steelers were a superb fourth quarter team last season, outscoring opponents by 29 points, the fifth best rate in the NFL. The team won four games that they trailed entering the fourth quarter, ranking first in the league. That was the ninth highest total since 2019. Those type of late game performances are not particularly stable and could regress the season. Of course they could. And history shows they will. This team's just been different with that. Tomlin thrives in that situation and sets himself up to excel in the fourth quarter. So I'm not disputing that. It's definitely a reason to bet the under, but I think the Steelers are a little different than other teams that way. Likely starter Russell Wilson should be an upgrade on what the Steelers got of their quarterbacks last season, but he also was not good in 2023 despite being on the right side of touchdown variance. As has become the norm, he held the ball too long looking for big plays and was often forced to settle for checkdowns. Among qualifying quarterbacks, Wilson was second to Justin Fields in the percentage of his attempts with more than three seconds before the throw. He was also second in percentage of his attempts that were thrown at or, be- at or behind the line of scrimmage and just third in his percentage of deep targets. Third, I'm not, not just third. He is, was third in his deep targets. The very boom or bust nature of his game. You know, it's a, it's a putt or it's a drive with Wilson. I can't fight that. I do think his protection will be better. He handled pressure really well last year. I think the ball does need to come out more, though. I also think this scheme fits where he's at as a player much, much better than Sean Payton's did. So I still have my concerns at the quarterback position. Don't get me wrong. Why bet the over? Steelers offense finished 22nd in yards per play and 28th in points per drive. They scored 149 points in the first half of games, 28th in the league. The entire offense was built around improving, or the entire offseason was built around improving their offense with two new quarterbacks, a new offensive coordinator, tons of offensive line additions as well. Even a league average offense paired with Pittsburgh defense could be enough for a great season. I agree with that. I mean, would we all take a league average offense in 2024? Yeah. It's been a while, man. I mean, it's been a while. Yes. Speaking of that defense, they finished ninth in points per drive allowed, 11th in pressure rate, and 8th in takeaways. They are ninth in defensive EPA per play over the last three seasons. This has consistently been a strong unit, and they arguably got better this offseason. 100% agree, except I don't think it's arguable they got better this offseason. I mean, they are way better at linebacker. I think the back seven depth and speed is much better. And I think a guy like Benton is going to become a much bigger part of the defense. Lastly, (laughs) it's an old and played out storyline, but it remains true. Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season as an NFL head coach. His teams have won eight or more games for 17 seasons in a row. I know no one wants to hear that anymore, but it's still 17 seasons in a row. (laughs) Does that mean he's due to lose the next 17 seasons? I don't think so. I think he's pretty good at getting over 500. I will also take the over eight and a half wins for the Steelers this year. I expect them to be a very competitive football team. I really do. And I can't wait for our next podcast when we can start talking about football with pads on and hitting and all that good stuff. So that is what's coming up next, folks. 
Give me a follow on YouTube as well. I know a lot of you guys watch this on YouTube. Go check out my channel at Williamson NFL. Thanks so much. Over and out.